Hello Great Files, in today's video we're going to be looking at the different types of work. So I'll show you again how to calculate work and we're going to be looking at positive work and negative work and what that means and for which forces this applies to. You'll see what I mean when we get into the video. I give lots of teacher tips and tricks so you don't want to miss that either. Let's go. In the previous video we discussed what work is, the definition and how to calculate work. I also showed you that we can adapt the formula to calculate work done by a specific force. So if you missed that video, you're going to want to look at the link in the description box below. Very, very important in order for you to understand and move on to the next video. So in this video, we're going to be speaking about positive, negative, and zero work. What that means, what that means in terms of energy, and how to calculate this. So first things first, this is essentially a summary of what we will be going over. Don't worry, I will go over each of these with you with examples. So let's jump right in. So in this scenario, we are going to be speaking about positive work. Okay, positive as in values greater than zero. So we experience or a force will do positive work if the angle, if theta, remember theta is the angle, if the angle between the force and the displacement is bigger than zero, but less than 90. So bigger than or equal to zero actually, but less than 90. So what I mean by that is, for example, a scenario like this. If my applied force like this, let's call it FA, is 20 newton to the right and the box moves to the right, I hope you can see that they are both going in the exact same direction. You could actually lay them on top of one another. There's no angle that separates them. There's a clear difference between, for example, something going to the right and then a force that's going in the complete opposite direction. That has an obtuse angle that separates them. But in this case, my box is going to the right like this, and my force is also going in the exact same direction. So in this case, theta is equal to zero. And if you type cos of zero in on your calculator, you get one which is a positive answer, which gives me positive work. Now you might be thinking, whoa, 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 wait a second, ma'am. Why are we saying cos of zero or cos of theta? Remember, in order to calculate work, we take work is equal to the force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by cos of the angle. So if theta, if the angle is zero, then cos of zero is one, which gives me a positive answer for work. Take a look at the scenario over here. Also, once again, an applied force, but I'm pulling it up and at an angle. Again, let's pretend the box is moving to the right. Let's pretend the angle that I'm pulling the box at is 30 degrees. Now, which way is the box moving? The box is moving to the right. So the displacement is moving to the right. The applied force or the direction of the force is up and to the right at an angle of 30 degrees. So theta is the angle between the force and the displacement, which in this case is 30 degrees. If into the formula, in the place of theta, you put 30, cos 30, if you type cos 30 onto your calculator using special triangles, you can actually get to the answer as well. You get that, which is about 0, 0.86. It's a positive answer, which means ultimately you'll get a positive answer for work which means positive work. Now, if a force does positive work, it means that it's transferring energy to the object. It'll end up increasing the object's velocity. And that makes sense because if you think about an applied force, so you're pulling something or you're pushing something, you're giving energy to that object, causing that object to move, to accelerate. So let's do an actual example just so you can see. It's a very, very simple example but we've got, I push a three kilogram block with an applied force of 10 Newton to the right. A frictional force of two Newton acts on the block. Calculate the work done by the applied force. Now remember, always a good idea to do a free body diagram, although in this question it's very simple. I don't really need one, but I just wanna show you. We've got an applied force acting to the right, so F applied. We've got a frictional force acting to the left. I'm gonna call it FK because it's kinetic friction. We've got weight acting straight down, Fg, and we've got a normal force acting straight up, Fn. There are four forces 
acting on this block right now. Which means that technically, I could calculate the work done by each of these forces. I could do four separate work calculations. Work done by force applied, work done by normal force, work done by FG or weights or gravitational force, and work done by friction. In this question, however, I'm only asking for the work done by the applied force. So what I do is I write my formula. So work is equal to force delta x cos theta. Force, because I'm looking for the work done by the applied force, I'm going to call it FA. My applied force, my F, is my applied force, which the question told me was 10 Newton. So in the place of F, I'm putting 10. How far did the block go? I actually didn't mention that in the question. I definitely have to mention how far the block goes. There we go. I've adapted the question. The block moves four meters to the right. So how far it moves, that's the displacement. Displacement is four. And then I push a three kilogram block with an applied force of 10 newton to the right. So the applied force is going to the right. Okay. So the applied force is going to the right. The box is moving to the right. The angle between them, zero. Just think if they're going in the exact same direction, the angle between them is zero. So 10 times four times cos zero. I don't even know why I'm typing it in because cos zero is equal to one. So it's 10 times four times one, which is 40. So 40 joules. Remember, work is a scalar. It's measured in joules, doesn't need a direction. That means that the applied force transfers 40 joules of energy to the block. It is positive work. It's a positive answer. If my angle is 90, no work will be done on the object by that force. So again, I said over here, let's pretend that these boxes move to the right. Okay, so we've got the box moving to the right. I could ask you, what is the work done by the normal force? Fn goes straight up. So the force is going straight up, Fn. The box is moving to the right. The displacement is to the right. That angle is 90. Same thing with weights. Fg acts straight down, straight down, Fg. The box is moving to the right. The angle between those, 90. If you type cos 90 on your calculator, you get zero. So a force that acts at 90 degrees to the motion of the box or the displacement does not do work. Okay, here is another example of that. Box moves to the right, Fn is acting up. So, I mean, cos 90, anything multiplied by cos 90 is going to be zero. Doesn't matter what these values are, cos 90 is zero. Zero times by anything, zero joules. So in this example over here, it is the exact same question as I had previously with the same block, same mass, same everything. Um, I must just add in there that the block is moving four meters to the right, but it doesn't matter because they say calculate the work done by the weight. Now immediately you can write the formula, work is equal to the force multiplied by delta x multiplied by cos theta. The force is the weight. How do you calculate weight? If G is equal to mass times gravity, the mass is three kilograms, G is 9.8. You will see that I'm doing all of this for nothing. That is 29.4 Newton downwards. So the force is the weight, the work, the work done by the weight. The weight is F, F G or W, it's mass times gravity. So it's 29,4. Displacement is how far the box moved, it's four meters. But the angle is cos 90. Why? Because remember, the weight goes down, Fg is going down, and the box is moving to the right. The angle between them is 90 degrees, so cos 90. Cos 90 is zero. So this entire thing is just zero joules. No energy is transferred to the block or the box or whatever by the weight. So that is an example of zero work. Then negative work. So that is when theta is greater than 90 but less than 180 less than or equal to okay less than or equal to 180 then we've got negative work which means that energy is removed from the object now remember we can't just destroy energy or remove energy and throw it away when we remove energy from the object we transform it into other forms like heat sound light so 
friction is an example of a force that does this. Think about friction. In this case, my box once again is moving to the right. So look at displacement. Displacement's going to the right. Friction acts always in the opposite direction of motion. So if the box is moving to the right, friction will go to the left. Complete opposite directions. The angle between them is 180. And if you type in cos 180 on your calculator, you get negative 1. And negative 1 multiplied by all of this will get me a negative answer. So friction does negative work. It's not the only force that can do negative work, but it's one of them. If I have to do this example, calculate the work done by the frictional force. Remember, we're just adding in here that the box moves 4 meters to the right, 4 meters to the right. If I want to work out the work done by the frictional force, remember the box is moving to the right, displacement's to the right, friction is to the left, that angle is 180. So you write your formula, force times delta x times cos theta, the force, the frictional force, a frictional force of 2 newton acts on the block. So f is 2. Delta x is how far the block moved, it's 4 meters. The angle between the displacement and the force is 180, so cos 180. Remember, I just showed you that cos 180 is equal to negative 1, so it's negative 1 times 4 times 2, which is negative 8 joules. Now, a few important things to note here. When you are calculating the work done by friction, you do not, and I repeat, you do not, substitute friction in as negative okay you just substitute in the magnitude of friction so friction is two newtons to the left you just put in a two it will become a negative work okay so friction will do negative work but it becomes negative because of the angle okay so you don't put a negative in when you substitute in the magnitude of the force you just substitute in friction as two then cos 180 will make it a negative work i hope that makes sense now, when calculating work, because work is a scalar, it does not need a direction. What this means is you leave your answers negative. Negative work means that energy is removed from the object. That's it. You don't rewrite it as a positive. You don't do anything like that. You leave it as a negative. That's it. So, quick summary of the different types of works, just so you know. In the next video, I will be going over how to calculate networks, the two different ways that I often show and teach. And if you want to see more work in each of our videos, check out the playlist linked in the description box below. Subscribe for more, and I can't wait to see you in future videos. Bye, everyone.